Hello, my name is Katharina Kurian and I'm a consultant neuropathologist and honorary senior lecturer at French Shea Hospital, Bristol. This podcast will give a basic approach to the histological diagnosis of brain tumours. And what I'm going to do is first go over some of the theory behind the classification and then show some images at the end. Just to say that I've written a short article on recent advances in glial tumours which is freely available on the web and this article highlights the basic histology and then says more about the research in this area which may be of interest to you. So the four essential clinical features that the neuropathologist needs for diagnosis are the age of the patient, the location of the tumour, the duration of the symptoms and the presence or absence of contrast enhancement on radiology. This table shows the differential diagnosis in children and adults of the more common tumours and you can see that they're quite different. So in children the majority of tumours occur in the posterior fossa so we see medulloblastomas, pilocytic astrocytomas, ependymomas and choroid plexus tumours whereas in the midline in children we would consider craniopharyngiomas and germ cell tumours higher on the differential diagnosis. If you compare this with adults, in which the majority of tumours are in the anterior fossa, we see diffuse astrocytomas, anaplastic astrocytomas and glioblastomas, as well as oligodendroglial tumours. The dural-based tumours in adults are overwhelmingly meningiomas, and in the spinal cord, the common tumours are ependymomas, astrocytomas and peripheral nerve sheath tumours. This table highlights the WHO grading of the more common astrocytic tumours. So a WHO grade 1 tumour has a very low proliferative potential and may be cured by surgical resection alone. And a good example of this is a pilocytic astrocytoma which is seen in children more commonly. Interestingly, pilocytic astrocytomas can show mitotic figures microvascular proliferation or necrosis and so can be a diagnostic pitfall for the neuropathologists. By contrast, a WHO grade 2 tumour are histologically banal but generally infiltrative and recur. So an example of this would be diffuse astrocytoma WHO grade 2 which can be seen in children and adults. WHO grade 3 tumours show histological evidence of malignancy in the form of nuclear atypia and brisk mitotic activity. In most of these cases, the patients receive adjuvant radiation and chemotherapy in addition to surgery and typically have a shorter survival than grade 2 or grade 1 tumours. The most high grade WHO tumour is WHO grade 4, and these tumours are cytologically malignant, mitotically active tumours which tend to show necrosis and or microvascular proliferation. Most of these are associated with a rapid disease evolution and a good example of that would be glioblastoma WHO grade 4 which we see in adults. However interestingly some of the childhood embryonal tumours, for example medulloblastoma WHO grade 4, actually responds well to radiation and chemotherapy in many cases and has a much better overall five-year survival. This table shows the useful immunohistochemistry that we use to classify the more common nervous system tumours. So astrocytic tumours tend to be GFAP positive and GFAP stands for glial fibrillary acidic protein. However, there is less positivity in the higher grade or poorly differentiated tumours which can make diagnosis difficult. Oligodendroglial tumours have a mixed population so the typical fried egg tumour cells are GFAP negative but some tumours have mini gemistocytes within them which are GFAP positive. At present we don't have a routine marker that we use in diagnosis for oligodendroglial lineage. Ependymomas are positive for GFAP, S100 and sometimes show variable dot positivity for epithelial membrane antigen or EMA. 
medulloblastomas, which are often seen in childhood, are positive for neuronal markers such as synaptophysin and UN, and also show focal positivity for the glial marker GFAP. Meningiomas tend to be positive for epithelial membrane antigen and fermentin. So, here is a picture of a pilocytic astrocytoma WHO grade 1. Often these have a biphasic growth pattern and are characterised by pyloid or hair-like spindle cells, which you can see here within the image. The yellow arrow points to a Rosenthal fibre, which is an eosinophilic corkscrew conglomeration which can be seen in pilocytic astrocytomas and can be very useful for diagnosis. However, these are not specific for pilocytic astrocytomas so that they can be seen in long-standing reactive processes. As mentioned before, pilocytic astrocytomas can be very difficult for neuropathologists because they often show microvascular proliferation and necrosis, but this is not the case in the image that we've shown here. These images show a diffuse astrocytoma WHO grade 2 and an anaplastic astrocytoma WHO grade 3. You can see that the diffuse astrocytoma is very bland and has oval nuclei with indistinct fibrillary cell processes and no mitotic figures should be present. These can often be very difficult to tell from reactive processes and can pro provide a diagnostic challenge. However, if you compare this to figure 3 below, the anaplastic astrocytoma shows increased cellular packing density, nuclear pleomorphism and mitotic activity. The mitosis is in this yellow circle. This is a picture of a glioblastoma WHO grade 4. In the top image you can see the brain which is diffusely infiltrated by the tumour. There is haemorrhage within the tumour and a cystic area of necrosis as well as midline shift and spread. And you can see how difficult it is for the neurosurgeons because the edge of the tumour is really not defined so it can be very difficult in terms of debulking and resection. Below you can see the histology of the glioblastoma WHO grade 4 and this is the typical pseudopalisading of nuclei around small areas of necrosis which is pointed to by the yellow arrow. The very lowest picture is that of microvascular proliferation and essentially this is this abnormal multilayering of cells within the vessel wall which includes the endothelium and the smooth muscle of the vessel wall and in this case it has formed a glomeruloid structure which looks like a glomerulus within the kidney which is pointed to by the yellow arrow and it's these leaky blood vessels which provide the contrast enhancement that you see in the higher grade tumours on radiology. This is an image of an oligodendroglioma, WHO grade 2. You can get an anaplastic oligodendroglioma, which is WHO grade 3, but I haven't shown a picture of that here. This is the typical histology that we see, the fried egg tumour cell separated by thin-walled blood vessels. These so-called fried egg tumour cells are actually negative for GFAP, and there is nothing within the cytoplasm of the fried egg. It is just a retraction artifact, which is characteristic of the oligodendroglial lineage. This is an ependymoma, WHO grade 2, which can be seen in the posterior fossa of children or in the spinal cord of adults, typically. Ependymomas show true rosettes with lining up of tumour nuclei with a lumen in the centre which is shown by the yellow arrow and they can also show perivascular pseudo rosettes so lining up of tumour nuclei around blood vessels. There is an anaplastic version of ependymoma WHO grade 3 which I haven't shown here. This is a medulloblastoma WHO grade 4 which is typically seen in the posterior fossa of children. You can see it's characterised by sheets of small round blue cells with increased mitotic and apoptotic activity.
and this tumour will be positive for neuronal markers so such as synaptophysin and UN as well as glial markers such as GFAP. There are various different subtypes of medulloblastomas, some of which have a better and some of which have a worse prognosis. This is a picture of a meningioma, WHO grade 1. In the top image, figure 7a, you can see meningiomas arranged in whorls and the yellow arrow points to an intranuclear pseudo-inclusion, which is a bit of cytoplasm pushed into the nucleus, which are characteristic of meningiomas. The bottom picture, figure 8b, shows a meningioma with lots of somoma bodies, which are calcific concretions. There are a number of different types of meningioma, some of which affect the grade of the tumour. However, other features which affect the grade of the tumour include brain invasion and the presence of multifocal necrosis and mitotic activity. So finally, here are some of the references m which might be useful to you. In particular, the WHO classification of tumours of the nervous system is perfect for reading about these simple tumours and then the more complicated versions and subtypes that are present. So thank you very much for listening to the podcast. I hope it's been of some use to you.